We'll just go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're so thrilled that you could be here with us today on International Women's Day, uh, including those of you who are joining us remotely. Um, I cannot think of a better way to celebrate than by coming together to learn about and advocate for the rights of Haitian women and girls who currently face a situation of catastrophic violence and profound deprivations of their basic rights and necessities, including food, water, and access to health care, all against a broader landscape of inequality that undergirds the way in which the impact of Haiti's broader intersecting crises of governance, insecurity, and humanitarian emergencies disproportionately impact women and girls. My name is Sasha Filipova, and I'm the senior staff attorney uh, for the Institute of Justice and Democracy in Haiti, which was one of the petitioners who requested this morning's hearing before the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights on widespread sexual violence taking place against Haitian women and girls. During the hearing, um, we were able uh, during the hearing, our incredible collaborators, whom I'll introduce momentarily, were able to share with the commission details about the experiences of Haiti's women and girls and the structural and governance failures that leave them without protections, recourse, services, or accountability. They noted in particular chronic and deliberate impunity, unaddressed insecurity, uh, and the through lines from these and other violations of the human rights recognized within the inter-American system to the governance crises precipitated by Haiti's corrupt, undemocratic government irresponsibly supported by the international community. They offered to the commission thoughtful recommendations which we'll discuss further as part of our panel discussion. I want to not note at the outset that the commission and even the government of Haiti, whose representatives participated by Zoom, acknowledge the factual reality we shared during the hearing today and all acknowledged an urgent need to act. Notable, I think, is that the commissioners expressed agreement with our recommendations and more specifically, and in line with one of the recommendations we put forward, pointedly asked the government of Haiti to invite and enable fact-finding visits. And the government of Haiti appeared to have supported this ask. The commission will now have to hold the de facto government to this promise and to the other recommendations offered by the petitioners. Equally, the commission will have to require that other OIS member states respect Haitian self-determination and stop propping up the corrupt, illegitimate, and repressive de facto government, which is responsible for Haiti's current crises and impede solutions. The site event is intended to build and expand on what we discussed during the hearing. Uh, we will focus in particular on the experiences of women and girls, um, but we will also talk about the broader situation in Haiti and what the members of Haiti civil society we have here with us today believe to be the solutions. Before we jump into the panel discussion, I have the honor of sharing with you a video prepared by IJDH's sister organization, the Bureau des Avocats Internationaux, prepared specifically for this hearing, which they were unfortunately unable um, to present in person. Uh, due to challenges of traveling from Haiti. The BI is Haiti's oldest public interest law firm and works to support victims in seeking accountability, to promote the effective function of Haiti's judiciary for that purpose, and to support grassroots organizing by marginalized communities to advance and protect their human rights. This video was prepared by two of BI's remarkable lawyers, Megladis Termezi and Mekatia Dorosan Lafouy, who fight for the rights of women and girls as part of BI's rape accountability and prevention program. The program wrap brings together direct legal services, partnerships with medical providers, community organizing, and public advocacy to secure justice for individual survivors, to establish legal precedents for the prosecution of sexual and gender-based violence in Haitian courts, to empower women and girls as rights enforcers, and to shift attitudes and norms that enable impunity and undervalue justice for sexual and gender-based violence. Before I play the video, and I'll introduce our panel right after, I just want to note our disappointment that the commission did not enable remote participation by petitioning civil society organizations like the BAI and also COFAVIV, which is a grassroots human rights organization founded by and for victims of rape. And those organizations were consequently unable to participate today directly. That opportunity was, however, offered to the government of Haiti. Equally, the challenges with interpretation we experience today are unfortunately too representative of the lack of language justice in the space and persistent failures to include Haitians in important public discussions in this region 
by ensuring that commission materials and events are accessible in Haitian Creole and French. With that, I'll play the video right now. Moi, je Marie-Katia Louriscan. Je suis accompagnée de Mme Platis Termézi. Nous sommes ces deux avocats femmes qui travaillent dans le bureau avocat international BAI, qui est un cabinet avocat qui travaille avec à l'IGDH, Institut pour justice et démocratie dans le pays d'Haïti. Il y a plus de 12 ans. Dans le cadre d'un programme d'assistance légale, il y a des femmes actives qui victime Zaka déjà dans le pays d'Haïti. Dans le cadre de nous, nous constatons que dans trois dernières années, il y a des femmes qui sont victimes de Zaka déjà en bas de la même à cause de l'insécurité qui a valé Et puis, il y a des femmes qui sont victimes de Zaka déjà en bas de la même Ça nous a fait un cesse là. Que nous connaissons qui pas pénalisé dans le système judiciaire de l'Haïti qui seulement considéré comme une circonstance aggravante pour la police à cause des autorités sur victimes. Selon l'article 280 dans le code pénal haïtien, qui a noté par Patrick Pierre-Louis et puis maintenant Pierre-Louis. Malgré le système judiciaire presque paralysé à cause des problèmes sociopolitiques pays d'Haïti a confronté, ça va empêcher de continuer à accompagner les victimes dans le tribunal pour la justice et la préparation. Je vais vous expliquer ce que vous avez là. BIA a confronté à gros problème à système judiciaire pays d'Haïti. Les victimes ont eu un peu de difficultés pour la justice et la préparation. Vous voyez dans tout niveau de la société, vous avez eu un peu de victimes. Dans l'école, dans l'église, dans tout secteur, dans la vie sociale et politique. Dans l'année 2017, il a été trouvé face à un gros système mafia en dedans la justice pays d'Haïti. Côté, il y a un papa qui a vu des petites filles qui étaient récemment éclatées, qui a subi déjà un même aussi là, qui est un gros fonctionnaire dans l'État. Les victimes n'ont pas décidé de parler. Maman n'a pas le côté plainte, non, DCPJ, à Paris pour tout le commissaire qui a saisi les dossiers, qui a eu un mandat pour te mener pour sa valise, et qui a eu un mandat pour te mener pour 13 mars 2017. Le commissaire a eu un mandat pour te mener pour informer, pour te voyer le dossier de sa cabinet d'instruction. Il y a eu un juge d'instruction pour l'institut de CESA. Le juge d'instruction a été désigné sur le CIA. Après le finissement de la victime, il a été rendu une ordonnance de donner en faveur de l'équilibre. Et dans la date 11 juin 2018, le paquet de la presse a été signifié victime dans le bureau avocat international qui s'est domicilié la victime. Parce qu'il n'y a pas même de victimes dans la possibilité. Dans la même date, il a été libéré et agressé. Parce qu'il a été gagné pour l'influence dans l'État. Ce n'est pas cette victime qui a subi la violation. Il y a un paquet de notre enfant qui a été violé. Qui a été violé par la justice. La justice vire de l'eau pour faire face à vous. Sans ne pas oublier, les gangs armés qui prennent le tribunal sont en otage. Le tribunal de première instance pour le prince, l'avocat victime n'a pas présenté la dame. Le tribunal de droit des bouquets est séparé. Ça permet que les victimes ne soient pas jouer la justice à préparation et aux films victimes. Le dossier victime, ça a. Victime n'a pas été fait appel sur lui, côté que pour juger le jeudi, victime n'a pas été fait appel sur lui, et justice et ça va être vous qui sauté. Dans ce sens, le Bureau de l'Avocat international et la victime a fait face à un bon dilemme, côté insécurité, à valer le terrain, 
et femme à petit fille, pas suspendre violé par gang ami. Et pas qu'à déplacer qui était zone pour aller porter plainte contre agresseur. Et puis, en pile, le tribunal n'a pas arrivé à fonctionner à cause de la gang prend le tribunal en otage. Sans compter en pile, le juge corrompu qui a justice à Sila qui a influence. Thank you very much for your attention to that important testimony. Um, and now to discuss uh, the challenges described in this video, as well as the other challenges facing Katie, I'd like to introduce you to our distinguished moderator and panelists. Moderating for us today is Kareen Jocelyn, who has over 15 years of experience working in Haiti and is the founder of the Haitian Women's Collective, which invests in building capacity of local women's groups and advocates for U.S.-Haiti policies that promote self-determination of Haitian communities. Kareen is also the board chair of the Haiti Adolescent Girls Network and works as an executive and consultant in the nonprofit public health space. Um, Rosie Auguste Dicena is a human rights lawyer with the Réseau National de Défense des Droits Humains, RNDDH, a Haitian nonprofit organization for the promotion and defense of human rights. As program director, Rosie coordinates human rights training activities and monitoring of key state institutions, the general human rights situation, humanitarian interventions during disasters, as well as electoral processes in Haiti. Pascal Solage is a Haitian grassroots feminist organizer. She's a founding member and general coordinator of the feminist organization Negus Malon, which since 2015 has worked to improve conditions for women and girls in Haiti, including through public education and mobilization. In 2018, she also co-founded Nipop Domi, a collective of committed citizens for social justice and against corruption and impunity. Yvonne Janvier, Haitian attorney and law professor, is a specialist in human rights with more than three decades of experience in the field. Uh, Yvonne teaches at the Ecole Supérieure Catholique de Droit du Jérémy, ESCDROJ, where he directs an in-house criminal legal clinic, the first of its kind in Haiti. He is also engaged in several organizations aimed at raising citizenship awareness and advancing sustainable development. Caroline Joseph is co-founder and executive director of the Haitian Bridge Alliance. Under her leadership for more than six years now, the organization has been working to elevate the issues that black migrants are facing to build more solidarity and collective movement towards policy change. Gurleen is also the co-founder of the Black Immigrants Bail Fund, a national project of the Haitian Bridge Alliance, and African Bureau for Immigration and Social Affairs, with support of other black-led organizations in response to the high bond amount given to black immigrants. I also want to acknowledge and thank independent journalist Jeremy Dupin, who is going to interpret for us today. With that, Kareem. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Happy International Women's Day. Come on for the women in the world. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Sasha, for your words of introduction for our distinguished panel. Um, I know that um, many have traveled, uh, Wazi, and also Yvonne, Yvonne. <laughs> um, to come and be with us and spend some time and share their knowledge and experiences. And so I certainly want to honor them because um, with everything going on, it certainly wasn't easy to travel um, to the state. So I certainly honor them and the entire panel. And so today as part of um, our participation, um, there was, I'd, lo I'd love to hear what the general reaction is from the panel um, to the commentary that many of the members of the, many of the commissioners um, had today. So I will start with Pascal, just because you're closer to me. <laughs> So what is your general reaction to the commissioner's commentary today? Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here, and thanks for the invitation. Um, today was difficult, really emotional, because during our presence here, we know what happened in the country. During this hearing, after this hearing, we receive um, messages from girls in the school in Haiti screaming because they shoot a professor, a teacher, in a classroom in Paul Prince. So 
being here and talking about the situation in the country and having all the comments um, of the commission, of the government. Um, we hope having actions. We hope that is not um, more talking, another hearing, and no priority for Haiti and no priority for the Asian women and girls. Yesterday night, I talked to Wozi, and it's not a first time, a first hearing with this commission. It's not our first presence, you know, in the international community, um, international institution to talking about um, the realities of Asian women and girls. And unfortunately, we don't have action for this, the atrocity that the women and girls lives in Haiti. No really action, no really support, no real support. And you know, um, when we ask to stop the support to the Asian government, it's the will, will support that we need as civil society and as Asians. Mm -hmm. So we are grateful um, being here and giving visibility to the lives and realities of Asian women and girls in the country. But as civil society and as citizen, Asian citizen and Asian women, we ask, we use the international community to take action for saving lives of Asian women today because every day we count by dozen women who were killed in the country and girls raped in the country. So this time we hope that we will have real decision and real action for changing this condition of the women and the girls in my country. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think for me, um, in listening to many of the commissioners, they very much confirmed a lot of what all of us had to say, right, about the status of things in, in Haiti. And certainly I think the Haitian government, although it was very difficult to hear and there was um, issues with the connection, um, that they confirmed too, right, about the crisis and the status of, of women in Haiti. Um, so is there anything else? Um, okay, that Rosie. <laughs> yeah. Anything else, Rosie, that you would like to say, your reaction to the commissioner's commentary? Yes, of course. Thank you. Merci en pile. Bonsoir à tout le monde. Bonsoir. Um, mm -hmm. Oui, en fait, et merci parce que nous là, parce que nous avons parlé de Haïti avec nous. Et, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Et ça m'a été voulu dire sous réaction commission commission interaméricaine de mon nom. Thank you for being here with us and uh, to allow us to um, talk about Haiti. And what we would like to say about the comments of the um, um, uh, interaméricaine commission today. C'est que ils ont montré que ils connaissent qui sa capacité en Haïti. It's uh, that they show that they uh, they are aware about the real situation on the ground of Haiti. Particulièrement commissaire Rallon, um, qui présente nous avec des détails dans le commentaire lié qui j'en les comprendre ce qui a passé en Haïti. Yeah. And especially uh, commissaire uh, Rallon, um, he, he he eloquently shows with a lot of details um, uh, uh, everything that they know about Haiti. Et c'est peut-être ça, je dis, en fait, nous avons une situation pour nous demander tête nous, pour qui ça, est-ce que pas jamais une mesure qui prend, pour qui ça pas une mesure conservatoire qui prend sous situation en Haïti. And uh, that, uh, that that's a reason now uh, to uh, make us question ourselves why there's never a real measure to uh, have been taken and uh, and the Haiti situation if if they know if they have real uh, information about what, what, what was going on. Et Jean que et Pascal se dit là en fait c'est que en nous non situation côté que nous a participé dans plusieurs hearing, n'a présenté situation pas si pas là, nous avec un bon monde en face nous qui connaît ça qui a passé en Haïti, mais dès que il s'agit pour yo prend des mesures, gagne un blocage. Um, I mean as uh, Pascal just just said it uh, we are um, um, partic participating in a lot of hearings. We are sharing m m information, uh, but when it's time for uh, to take real measure, to take action, 
uh, in order to change things, you see there's a blockage. L'État haïtien lui-même pas de gain pour le devenir dit non en fait, mais c'est pas on nous pas saisi, c'est c'est le contraire qui t'a fait nous saisir. Um, well, uh, for the Haitian government, they didn't have much to say. Uh, they have anything new to say, but we were not surprised about that. Et malheureusement, tout, ils ont utilisé des fois des termes qui montraient que ils ont vraiment à côté de langage doua moun, ils ont vraiment à côté de langage doua femme, ils ont vraiment à côté de violence sexo spécifique. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes they use some languages that show that uh, they are uh, they are really out of um, subject when 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 we are talking uh, when we are considering uh, you, 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 human rights, all the violations uh, that's happening in, in the country. Et dernier bagay m'a dit c'est que yo promet devant commission que yo pral tande recommandation non. And lastly, they promised uh, in front of the commission that they're going to um, uh, um, consider uh, all the um, uh, pro proposition uh, that, that we made today. Mais recommandation nous avons toujours fait au Haïti, à yo, yo pas jamais suivi yo. But all the, those recommendations, it is not the first time that, that, we, that we propose them those kind of re recommendations, but they never act on them. Donc c'était seulement un show pour la Commission interaméricaine de l'Amour. Merci en pile. It was just uh, for them. It was just a show, so they could uh, save face and for and and for of the uh, and for of the commission. Okay, thank you yeah. so much. Thank you, Rosie. So Eva, same same question for you. What was your reaction to the commissioners today in the hearing? Thank you. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like, like to uh, to thank you, everyone, for being here and give me uh, some time to uh, especially express uh, my gratitude to our colleagues, uh, our partners, uh, students and professors as uh, UC Law SF uh, uh, for their commitment and who accompanying us for all being here. And special thanks to my colleagues, uh, Karin, uh, uh, Gerlin, uh, uh, Jocelyn uh, Rosie for the fight to bring, I mean, to raise awareness on the situation of women all over the world, especially in Haiti. Now I would like uh, my mother tongue to be heard here in this, uh, uh, I mean, this, uh, I mean, before this audience. Uh, Normalement, il n'y a pas de choses pour m'ajouter sur les réponses que les collègues m'ont eu à l'autre bord de la table. Basically, I have, I don't have much to, 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 to add after uh, li listening to uh, what just said all my, uh, my colleagues on the other side of the table. Mais ça m'a dit, c'est que il y a un travail de plaidoyer. Nous tous qui là, nous connaissons les gagnants euh, avantage li et en même temps, il y a une limite le tout. But uh, we know, uh, I mean, the kind of work we do as as a um, uh, human rights activist, it has its, its limits and in terms of uh, what we can do. Mais nous-mêmes, la travail à faire, mais ces facettes ça nous considérer, nous porter, nous tout qui là, nous porter voix, tifi, qui mine, jeune femme en Haïti qui violé, qui massacré, voit ça yo que nous mêmes n'ont pas qu'attendé jamais dia ban nous reporter là. Eh ben c'est voit ça yo nous voyons avec chez nous, nous tant des souffrances yo, c'est voit ça yo nous devine fort attendé. Um, um as today, I mean our um our job was to 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 bring to you the the voices of of the Haitian women of underage girls that, uh, that uh, many times misrepresent, misrepresented uh, by, by our media and with uh, the limitations. So we want to, 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 to bring that to you, to make you hear um, about them. Et puis, heureusement pour nous, a commissionnaire, yo, yo, a sentiment nous t'épote là, d'après perception nous, nous voyons comprendre, voir ça. Et je crois que c'est 
toutes les possibilités d'après procédure euh, euh, commission si c'est une possibilité puis on prend mesure nous penser que on t'apprend tout de suite and very fortunately uh, we can say that uh, the commissioners they were uh, um, they 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 were uh, very um, favorable to um, to um, everything uh, we said especially all the recommendation and uh, we, we we feel that we feel like and and the policy if they had the rights to uh, take um, uh, this decision they would have uh, act right away okay. thank you thank you Ivo I'm gonna stay with you and ask you ah, okay. the next question so as an attorney can you share <coughs> with us some of the barriers challenges to women survivors obtaining justice uh, thank you for this I've been writing on this uh, m m many time ago a barrier sayo no te exprimé yo l'en uh, témoignage non devant commission hein? nous va résumer yo là et, et succinctement um uh, these ch ch challenges uh we uh, uh we uh, we gonna um uh, we should them uh um momentarily uh, premier barrière qui fait que uh, femme avec tifi qui violé en Haïti pas qu'à jouer une justice c'est ça collègue moi dégagé déjà ces problèmes corruption um, the first reason that uh, uh, women and uh, underage girls that are uh, uh, victims of, 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 of rape cannot find justice is the, the, the reason that my colleagues are already talking about is because of corruption et comme en preuve, euh, instance supérieure qui réglementait question justice dans Haïti, les sont écarté environ plus d'une trentaine de juges qui l'ont système non pour corruption et malversation. And uh, one uh, one thing, I mean one good good example uh, to prove you that is the uh, the the higher uh, instance in the ju judiciary system uh, just um, expelled from 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 the system to the judges for uh, for their wrongdoing. Deuxième aspect, nous avons considéré c'est que nous avons un système qui n'est pas efficace. Um, se second of all. Uh, Uh, we, 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 we can say we have a ju judiciary system that's very that has a lot of limitation. Ça, pas efficace. Yon exemple, l'État pas qu'à répondre à temps à besoin monde qui viole yo, femme, tifi, pour yo ka permet yo retrouver, récupérer droit yo et joindre réparation. Um, the uh, the Haitian government, uh, the Haitian state, they don't have the means to 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 respond on time and adequately uh, when when uh, like a, a, a woman or an underage girl is victim uh, of of rape. Et toutes ça eux sont violations de obligations internationales l'État haïtien gagne et L'autre aspect de la violation, ça, qui c'est un troisième point qui fait victime au parc à jeune justice, c'est que l'État n'a pas mis assez de ressources disponibles en dans le système non, pour le faire victime au jeune justice. Et 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 thirdly, um, the government they they don't mobilize uh, enough resources uh, to in order to to respond. Uh, Um, when, when, when you ha when you have a girl or or woman uh, victim of, of rape. Et en termes de ressources humaines, à côté de ressources matérielles, l'État a entré mon âme dans le système non? Les mettait des mondes souillons d'après une approche partisan et mondes ça yo en pile là dedans yo yo pas compétent. 
and 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 also you um, are part of the uh, all the uh, limitation and in, in terms of um, material re resources. We also have a, a lack of uh, human resources because the way that that the 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 government hire people, it's it, it's not based on on, on competency. It's it, it based more on uh, on a pa pa partisanship. Dernier aspect, hein, ma, pour me yon l'autre collègue la parole. Un dernier point, pour ne pas dire non que c'est l'État, bon l'État seulement n'a pas gardé. Euh, dernier point, ma prend. Ah, ok. Dernier aspect que ma prend et un dernier point qui comme barrière qui fait victime violencio pas qu'à jouer une justice. Ça me va le bail là, son façon pour pas dire non que c'est seulement bon l'État en abgadé. And uh, lastly, uh, um, the one, one of the aspects that uh, um, um, make that uh, make us honorable to uh, for the government to provide justice to 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 to, to the victim in order to not talking only ab ab about the responsibility of the government mais c'est que victime yo tout bon côté pa yo 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 manquer uh, éducation ça qui pour ta fait que yo même bon côté pa yo kon exactement comment pour ré réagir qui réponse pour yo ka à agresseur yo et puis pour ta protéger tête yo tout it's it's uh it's a, a lack of of of, of, of uh, knowledge um uh, part of the part of the vi vi victims it's a lack of uh, awareness about the the rights and uh, how to how to react when 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 they are victims okay thank you thank you Gurley. So, Gerlin, considering what we know about the general, general human rights crisis um, in Haiti and your work here in terms of immigration and migration and issues around discrimination, um, particularly for, for black migrants and black immigrants, um, what would you consider to share with the commissioners or just our audience here about the importance of our being able to stabilize as much as possible or to address as much as possible um, the crisis in Haiti? Uh, thank you so much, Karin. Uh, you know, uh, before I say that, I want to pay honor to our foremothers mm. who led and who led a strong revolution that gave freedom, liberation, not only to Haiti, but to the world. Mm. And I want to honor them today on this International Women's Day. Um, looking into what we are dealing with, with people in mobility and migration, and we understand that we have to look into what causes of what is making people flee their home. And the reality is it is impossible due to the political turmoils, the gang violence, the issues you just heard from my colleagues, that is the reality. And so we see people being forced to flee home and migrate from country to country, from what we say in Haiti, cherche la vie, simply looking for life. Mm. And many times, unfortunately, we see this looking for life turn into destroying lives. This cherche la vie turn into détruire la vie. And we see that throughout the journey, and we see that in Haiti. Mm -hmm. um, stories we hear every day are heartbreaking. What we're witnessing in Haiti right now is a new abyss that we have never seen before. Places in the mountainside, in Fermat, in, 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 in uh, Forjac, where even when at the worst in Haiti, in, in 1984, 1986, when we thought that we were at the lowest of low, mm. still some places in Haiti, people were able to breathe. Today, we cannot say that. I am one of the strongest advocates to uplift the beauty of who we are as a people, our culture, but at the same time looking at the reality, understanding where we are today. It is a state of failure. 
where our forefathers and, and, and ancestors who fought to get us to a different place. Unfortunately, we see both internal violence, those who are in Haiti, who refuse to place Haiti first, who refuse to up, uphold justice and human rights, who refuse to bring accountability, who refuse to face the issues facing women, women and girls being raped, as you've heard from my colleagues. That's what we call internal violence. But we are also looking at over 200 years of external violence, including deportations of women and girls into Haiti as we speak today. Under this new administration, over 36,000 people have been sent, including pregnant women, newborn baby girls just a few days old. That is a part of the external violence that we continue to see creating an ecosystem where people cannot survive. Mm -hmm. So that is why we continue to bring to everyone, including the commissions, including those who are in power in Haiti, including the international public, mm -hmm. that in order for us to get away from where we are right now, we must work together to create a strong, safe, sustainable ecosystem in Haiti where we are able to build schools, hospitals, roads, agriculture, uh, farming, where the United States has been actively a part of creating those kind of situations in Haiti, including devast devastating the, the, the rice uh, um, uh, uh, production, destroying the poultry con the, the, the product, uh, production, destroying our, our uh, pig, the black pig, that is the source of every single person on the outskirts of the country to be able to raise their families and feed their families. We see those ex external, what we call external violence being a part of the root causes of migration. And then we hear every day the sexual abuse of women traversing every single country in Southern Latin America in their black skin where there is no safe space for them. And at the US-Mexico border right now, this morning on my way here, talking to a woman, telling me that she is living in fear in a tent where she has two kids and she doesn't know what tomorrow will bring. That's the reality, and that is the reason why we see the uh, root causes of forced migration, and in order for us to get some solution, we must face those, those realities. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you so much. Certainly today on um, International Women's Day, and, and our conversation earlier today before the commissioners was very much focused on, on violence against women, structural violence, physical violence, um, sexual assault, and so forth. And again, to kind of set the foundation for all to understand who are here and watching, Rosie, I'd like you to talk to us a little bit about the general human rights situation in Haiti, and in particular, around governance and around the illegitimacy of our current de facto prime minister. Okay, merci un peu. En fait, je ne je dis en Haïti, nous vivons une situation qui est très grave de violation droit monde. Um, nowadays, uh, in, in Haiti, we are, we are living in a very critical situation um, in terms of human rights. Et pour me capable de donner une idée, 15 personnes par jour, en moyenne, victimes de kidnapping. Just to give you an idea, an average of 15 uh, persons get kidnapped every day. 4 personnes en moyenne, victimes d'assassinat. Um, uh, an average four uh, individuals get assassinated every day. Sept femmes ou bien filles en moyenne victimes de violences sexuelles chaque jour. Um, seven uh, women or uh, my, um, a minor uh, get raped every day. Quatre policiers victimes par mois assassinat en moyenne. An average four police officers um, get assassinated every month. 
ça montre nous que en réalité en Haïti nous avons une négation droit à la vie nous avons une négation droit basique droit monde that uh, just this the the numbers show, show us a, um, a very um, a, 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 a very um, a dark um, um, a situation where the the right to live uh, it this is not re respected in Haiti. So question insécurité judiciaire nous a vivre dans une impunité généralisée. And for our judiciary system, uh, we are living in a complete uh, impunity system. For the whole last year, only 200 people uh, uh, had, had a chance to, to be uh, judged and convicted for the whole year and hate it. Mm -hmm. no, tribunal, devant tribunal criminel. I mean, and uh, as a uh, criminal court. Pourtant, il y a environ 12 000 personnes qui sont en prison et 82% d'eux ont obtenu un jugement. But uh, uh, we, 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 we have um, over 12,000 people in jail. So over 80% of, of the prisoners are en uh, uh, pre-trial uh, pre detention. Pre de 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 detention waiting to, 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 to see a judge. Nous avons un exécutif là qui mettait une mémise sur le judiciaire là parce qu'il voulait contrôler le judiciaire là. Et le um, exécutif power um, contrôle complètement le the, the judiciaire power. Nous avons un exemple, nomination président dans la cassation, nomination l'autre juge dans la cassation et avec corruption qui gagne dans l'appareil justice là. Uh, for example, the a, no, no nomination of the judge of the Supreme Court and uh, nomination of, of all, almost all, all the judges that is, um, uh, doesn't respect uh, the, the way that's supposed to be done. Pour question politique là, nous en négation droit à droit politique nous tout. And even for the uh, right uh, your to a po political right, um, this is almost inexistent. Depuis 2017, pas gain élection qui réalisé en Haïti. Uh, since 2017, there's no election uh, in Haiti. Je ne je dis pas gain un grand élu en Haïti. Uh, today, we don't have any legitimate uh, elected um, uh, personnel in Haiti. Donc, Premier ministre de facto Ariel Henry, c'est Wallier. Uh, the uh, de facto Prime Minister uh, Ariel Henry is uh, leading as a king. Nous n'en négation droit économique, social, nous tout. Um, it, 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 it's a dark, dark situation for the um, economic Uh, and uh, social uh, um, life as well. Logement décent, ça pas existé pour nous haïtiens haïtiennes. There's no um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, decent uh, housing, uh, um, ha housing project. Mm -hmm. Travail, nous pas gain droit ça. Um, very high unemployment. On, 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 on Education zéro barré. Um, education very critical. Santé même genre. Healthcare is zero. Donc, dans condition ça, violation de monde systématique et dans même condition ça tout, femme avec tifi, avec tout le monde qui fait partie de groupes marginalisés dans la société, il y a victime tous les jours. And this and and the situation, we have a systematic um, of, uh, human rights violation almost every, every day. And the most ma ma marginalized people uh, that are most so suffering are women and and uh, um, and minor. Donc c'est vrai, je dis, on a parlé de journée internationale droit femme, mais en réalité, en Haïti, c'est tout le monde qui a victime parce que doit tout le monde a violé. Um, it's true that uh, today we are talking about uh, the International Women's Day. But the real situation on the ground of Haiti is that the rights of everybody are violating every day. Okay, thank you so much.
So Pascal, considering all of what we've heard, systematic oppression, um, unstable government or non-functioning government, as, as Rosie said, there is, and as I said in my comments earlier today, there is no elected president, there is no elected prime minister, there is no parliament. Um, how is it that the, the women's movement, which is fairly strong in Haiti, I think the movement for women and girls in Haiti is fairly strong, how are you able to concretely provide services um, as Zengis Mao and of course many of the other women-led organizations during this type of crisis? And how are you able to even access resources, for example, for women who have been violated or who, women who are in need? Okay, uh, merci, ma pripona creole. Um, effectivement, mouvement féministe haïtien est un mouvement qui est très fort, qui existe depuis plus de 100 ans. Um, effectively, the, the feminist movement in Haiti is a very strong movement. I mean, uh, we, we, we've been uh, existed for over 100 years. C'est vrai que son mouvement qui gagne en pile victoire, que femme yori vé gagne en pile à qui dans la bataille que vous menez. Um, along the way, uh, I mean, we had, uh, you know, many victories. So, yeah, we, we, uh, so, uh, so we have um, um, many, um, uh, what you call it? Uh, Jamie is tired. <laughs> Can you help, Yelling? Yeah, Yelling, yeah. okay. Yelling, yeah. well, Jamie is very tired. Actually. Okay, it's okay. That's all right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, okay. Donc, euh, moi, t'as dit que um, c'est vrai que mes journées jeudi, hein, même gens avec tout l'autre groupe organisé, mouvement organisé dans le monde, là, mouvement féministe a fait face à un pile challenge. I will say that just like movements around the world are dealing with a lot of issues, the feminist movement in Haiti is is dealing with a lot of challenges. Première réalité, hein, c'est question rivé fait travail non et pour nous faire en sécurité. Je ne dis à moi-même, comme un activiste féministe et politique, je suis obligé de quitter le pays. Je suis obligé de cacher nos ambassades avant que je quitte pour me capable de sauver la vie à cause du travail que nous faisons. The, the reality is it's extremely uh, difficult. Even myself, as a human rights activist, I had to flee my country. And I had to literally hide in one of the embassies before I was able to leave Haiti and come to the United States. Côté que nous avons collègues, nous, Antoinette Duclair, qui en juin 2021, ont assassiné de sept balles dans Port-au-Prince et que jusqu'à juin aujourd'hui, qui ne peut jamais capable de jouer une justice. Et nous pouvons voir nos collègues, Antoinette Duclair, qui a été assassinée avec sept balles et jusqu'à aujourd'hui, nous n'avons pas encore eu de justice sur sa part. Côté que, au niveau de Neges Mao, organisation que nous avons um, fondée, nous obligé de déplacer deux membres de staff nous pour permettre de vivre dans l'autre pays à cause de menaces sur la vie. And we have to, we've been forced to have our colleagues and employees at Neges Mao to leave Haiti and go into other countries so they can hide in order for them to survive. Et ça, c'est réalité. En pile, activistes, féministes, politiques, et droits humains dans le pays d'Haïti, je ne veux dire. Donc, il y a un plus gros challenge, c'est arriver capable de sécurité pour nous continuer à faire travail. Nous. And this is one of, this is the realities of the uh, many activists political uh, activists and feminists in Haiti, and the challenge is for them to get in a safe space and get security so they can continue to do the work that they do. Deuxième aspect, c'est quantité de travail que nous avons pour nous faire. Je prends l'exemple toujours de Neges Maron que moi représente, qui, dans sept derniers mois, dans quatre quartiers dans Port-au-Prince seulement, nous recevons plus que 600 cas femmes avec des filles qui victimes de viol collectif avec viol individuel. Uh, one of the other things I like to share is with Neges Mao uh, from what date? Um, Zodio? Quatre quartiers. Quatre La Saline, Cité Soleil, Bel Air et saint martin dans sept mois. In Mai 2022, janvier 2023. In about seven months, in those four specific areas, we received over 600 cases of, of sexual violence against women and children. La réalité, c'est que nous-mêmes, comme activistes, nous ne sommes pas capables de rentrer dans le quartier, je ne veux dire, pour nous aider les femmes. Parce qu'en pile fois, nous ne sommes pas capables de sortir dans la zone pour nous demander assistance. La réalité est que, comme activistes, nous ne pouvons pas même aller à ces endroits, à ces endroits, pour vraiment servir les personnes en besoin, parce que nous sommes peur et ils ne peuvent pas venir à nous pour recevoir l'aide qu'ils ont besoin. 
Nous manquons ressources pour nous bailler diverses formes d'assistance. Assistance médicale, assistance psychologique, assistance légale, assistance économique. Et en pile fois, nous obligés de relocaliser les femmes qui ne pas arrêter dans la zone côté aux victimes. We don't have uh, we don't have enough resources to actually support uh, the women in need with legal assistance, social assistance, uh, medical, housing, medical assistance. medical assistance, psychological assistance, mental health. Really, um, not able to get them because they don't have the resources that is needed, and they have to be able to find spa safe spaces for those people. Gagnons l'autre réalité qui c'est absence et dysfonctionnement l'État. There's another reality which is the um, the lack and unwillingness from the government. Ministère conditions femmes avec droits femmes dans le pays d'Haïti depuis pratiquement deux ans côté que nous dénoncé tout ça qui a passé en de pays an, pour que j'en prononce yon fois sous violence que femmes avec ces filles vivent dans le pays d'Haïti. The ministry that takes care of women and children, we have been denouncing all of those issues for the past two years. Not once have they taken a stand on what's happening. Jeudi en la commission, le représentant gouvernement dit que a assisté 11 000 femmes qui victimes violence. Today, today in front of the commission, the Haitian government said they have supported or helped around 1100 women uh, who were um, abused uh, who were subject of domestic uh, of sexual abuse moi ap campé catégoriquement pour me dire que c'est pas vrai i am Man. here to say absolutely it is untrue 3 avril l'année passée organisation féministe était obligé à faire un sitting devant ministère condition femme et droit femme pour demander au prendre responsabilité avec réalité que femme avec ses filles vivent dans pays in 2021? 3 avril 2022, Journée nationale du mouvement femme haïtienne. April, 20, April 3, 2022, um, the feminist movement and organizations were forced to go have a sit-in in front of the ministry to demand the right to be respected. Mm -hmm. Et n'a pas parlé de l'autre institution, le ministère de justice, le ministère de santé, avec l'autre institution qui est là pour bailler les femmes protection, qui la police, tout, par exemple, qui pas fait travail. Yo. And I am also talking about the Ministry of, of, of Health, mm -hmm. of Social Services, justice, justice, of yeah. Justice, national of police. National Police, mm -hmm. uh, have not been doing anything when we bring those issues into light. Donc voilà, c'est dans le contexte ça que l'organisation féministe est obligée de continuer à fonctionner en Haïti et essayer d'aider plus que 52% de la population que la vie est menacée. It's in this context that uh, the feminist movement or in organizations have been forced to themselves find ways to support about 52% of the Haitian population by themselves without any support from the government. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good stepping in, Gerlaine. Look at that. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I do want to make sure that we, we highlight, you know, we're, we're here, um, that there are so many others that helped us to be here and to pull us together. We've had several meetings. So folks from BAI, IJEDH, certainly UCLA, Hastings, all these wonderful folks. I do want to thank them for um, bringing us together today. I think as part of um, our hearing today, um, those that spoke and recognized what we had to say felt that it was um, really important. And I see that Commissioner Roberta Clark is here. And during our conversation afterwards, um, she and I had the conversation about, well, what can we do? What's the concrete thing that, that we can do? Because oftentimes, and certainly in the most recent times, people kind of feel like, what else can we do for Haiti? Like, we've, we've been here before. This is not the first go around, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, as a group, those that represent organizations, these individuals here obviously have put together a set of recommendations which I believe have been shared and were talked about um, today. And so I think it's important that we use that as a point of um, reflection and our first point of what we're saying. We're saying after all of this, all this time, these are the recommendations. But certainly for me, one of the things that I said to Commissioner Clark was, um, we're often said, it's often said um, that Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere and that people live on less than, I think they say a dollar per day or something like that. How can we be the poorest country and yet have the best arms um, in the region, quite frankly, now. Um, 
people who make less than a dollar a day can't buy a bullet, much less an AK-47 or whatever they're called, right? And so for me, I think the first point, if we're talking about um, safety, right, because you can't do no harm. Let's say we do no harm, right? In order for us to work with women, to provide services, for transportation, for healthcare, for all of these things, the reality is that the country is living in a time of terror under gangs, right? And so how can we stop arms trafficking? What can <laughs> we do? And we talked about the fact that um, the borders of Haiti are quite porous, as the commissioner shared with me, which is true. But instead of, for me, um, recommending this idea or having this idea of boots on the ground or international um, interventions, which, ha which has not ever worked in Haiti. The proof is there. I'm not making up the story. It just hasn't, hasn't worked. And so for me, the first point would be to try and stop the trafficking of guns from the U.S. and the Dominican Republic into Haiti. Is there anything else that you would share that you think could be a potential solution for those who are saying, what can we do? What can the international community do to support Haiti? Ivo, I'm going to start with you. Ah, it's a challenging question. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, Putting Gurley to work to do that? Haïti a tellement gagné un question, tellement gagné un problème, qu'on pas qu'on qui côté pour moi et qu'on y a là. In Haiti, we have so many questions, so many issues, so many problems. We don't know which way to really touch right now. Mais ce qui est certain est expérience, assistance humanitaire 2010, la moment tremblement de terre là, montrer que Haïtien doit mettre main en patte là à côté de accompagnement communauté internationale. Based on, a, uh, based on the experience uh, that we saw after the earthquake in Haiti, with humanitarian assistance coming to Haiti, we see it is critical that Haitians are a part of whatever type of discussions and or solutions we are looking at. Evidence la montre tout à partir de ça, Zamino, uh, Karine Abdila, tout collègue c'est que il y a une portion de la communauté internationale là qui est responsable de la situation Haïti à vivre jeudi. As we have heard from my colleagues Karine and others, we clearly see that the international community has a hand on what's happening in Haiti. Oh, faut nous être objectif pourtant à Jean Mondlan a fonctionné hein. Pas gain un pays qui a isolé tête les qu'on y a là qui pour dire que l'a développé pour contre As we are seeing how the world is moving, there is no country that can be isolated and say they will solve their own their own issues by themselves. Donc c'est que nous admettre que tout problème que Haïti à vivre là, les cas pas qu'à résoudre pour contrer. So we are saying right now, all the issues, all the problems Haiti is dealing with right now, Haiti might not be able to solve everything by itself or by herself. Haiti is a woman by herself. Mais ce qui est certain, c'est que nous gagnons volonté, le peuple haïtien, nous gagnons ressources qui compétent, tout comme nous gagnons volonté tout la main bon côté une portion la communauté internationale là so i will say that we have uh, people who are willing and committed to change in haiti there is a group uh, should we say that is committed and willing to do what needs to be done but also there is also a group from the international community that is willing to do the right thing as well pour me parler en façon qui est beaucoup plus concrète, et ça me le dire, il me dire que je n'ai pas engagé l'autre collègue moi qui est à la table. Pour moi, pour être un peu plus spécifique, je vais dire que ce que je vais dire maintenant ne peut pas involver mes collègues qui sont ici maintenant. Je vais toujours imaginer une forme par rapport à un problème qui n'est pas jamais fini, une forme de plan Marshall pour Haïti mais qui n'a pas semblé à plan Marshall, Jean, euh, États-Unis, tes potes soutien 
à, à, à l'Europe après la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. Je vais dire que je crois personnellement que peut-être qu'il y aurait un marshal Uh, um, a Marshall Plan for Haiti, but different and absolutely different than the Marshall Plan that we saw the United States use in uh, the, 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 the oh yeah, after the after the World, World, the World War II. Two. Uh, plan ça, il t'a demandé d'abord pour communauté haïtienne Chita, les proposer, les réfléchir sur lui, les travailler. Et puis, les vins joignent les amis de la communauté internationale là, qui accompagnent pour le réaliser. That plan, we will say, the Haitian people themselves will have to brainstorm, plan, come up with something concrete, and then join forces with allies from the international community so that they can come up with something strong. Donc, en résumé, je besoin dit que premier côté pour une solution à problème haïtien pour haïtien chita faut que yo d'accord puis yo entendre à partir d'un dialogue national in summary i will say in order for us to get to the next step the haitians will themselves will have to as i say come together brainstorm and come up with a plan where they can have a national uh, um dialogue national dialogue Haiti there's a lot of conversation already related to possible elections as I said we have no elected officials in Haiti right So, Rosie, I'd love to hear from you about what you would advise um, the commissioners today, ICHR, and OES about elections or future elections in Haiti. Okay. So, election, yo, pour me répondre à la première question, ça, pour nous même en Haïti, avant de parler de l'élection, il faut bien sécurité. Et, girl, in Ovedem, please. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> D'accord. Donc, ça me tape dit c'est que sous élection yo en Haïti, premier bagay, c'est que faut bien sécurité parce que faut communauté internationale là suspend pousser pour gain élection n'importe qui gens. First of all, uh, to in, in order to have election, uh, we need security. So the international co community uh, cannot continue to impose election in whatever condition. Parce que de toute façon, chaque lieu imposé nos élections comme ça, il est toujours débouché sous crise post-électorale. And as, the, uh, uh, as always, every time they, they impose con, uh, election in any condition, we always see it, it backfires on us. Je ne je dis pas, 100% territoire, département de l'Ouest là, contrôlé par gang armé. Uh, the Today, 100% of the uh, West Department, which is the Haitian capital, is uh, under control of armed gangs. Environ 60% territoire national là au complet sous contrôle gang armé. Uh, almost 60% of the national territory are controlled by gangs. Ça veut dire gang gain contrôle si conscription électorale yo, yo gain contrôle côté gain centre de vote yo. So we can say that uh, so so the gangs are are control of all the uh, vo voting centers, all the um, e um, election and, and infrastructure. Donc, si pas de sécurité, femme pas capable mener campagne, candidat pas capable mener campagne, électeur pas capable de voter. So, without uh, a, uh, um, a, a secure climate, you won't have, uh, uh, women will not be able to participate in the election, Can, um, candidate will not be able um, um, to campaign. Mais pour me tourner à mesures concrètes que que et um, commissaire Clark t'a demandé. Hein? Uh, but to reconsider the concrete measure that um, commissioner Clark was talking about. Nous pensons que nous était assez clair, ne serait-ce que par exemple dans exemple côté bail là. 
Karine, que nous sommes assez clairs non, et nous sommes assez concrets dans les recommandations. Je pense que nous étions clairs et dans les recommandations que nous avons les noms des communautés internationales là à prendre côté société civile là c'est parce que justement société civile haïtienne là il a pas chambre tendre uh, one thing we we so we we as the international community is to listen to the um civil society in Haiti because um I, I, as always they never pay attention to the recommendation of the civil society les nous mandé yo aider nous camper trafic zam nan c'est assez concret c'est assez ciblé when we ask them to help us to 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 to, to stop the guns trafficking in the country this is uh this is a very concrete measure les nous mandé yo pour mettre fin à appui inconditionnel que a by des gouvernements qui corrompu c'est très concret when we ask the international international community to stop supporting um corrupt government in, 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 in the country those are really concrete uh measures we 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 ask them to help us même j'en tout nous demander commission interaméricaine non mandé l'état exiger l'état faire la justice travail parce que côté gain impunité pas qu'à gagner respect droit monde c'est concret the same way we are asking the uh the the commission to uh to push the Haitian government to um to put the ju judiciary system to work because where you have impunity um you cannot have justice même j'en tout nous mandé pour bay la police la moyen pour faire travail li et ça tout li concret parce que moyen vle di zam li vle di munition li vle di matériel ak équipement policier pour capable goumer ak bandi yo The, the, the same way when we ask uh, for support for the national police we are clear we we we, we mean by that uh, they need the um um pro, pro, proper gun proper training and and uh proper uh, equipment uh, ammunition and other so they can fight the gangs mm -hmm. merci thank you thank you thank you so much i think our our time is very close to and end however Gerling Joseph would like to say um, something before I ask anyone in the audience if you have a question or two so Gerling thank you I, I just wanted to add with this arm issue as Karen mentioned and we really want the international community to understand the reality Haiti does not does not um, Manu produce manufacture any type of weapons and we are seeing young boys mm -hmm. carrying AK 500s whatever the names are <laughs> and we are understanding that those extreme weapons and ammunition are coming from the United States and possibly other places that is the reality when we talk about Haiti or the failed state of Haiti, it is because we continue to be at the receiving end of violence from everywhere. If we can stop the flow of heavy weaponry into Haiti, then we can start to begin to see a sight of relief when it comes to the security issues. We can throw a rock that will not kill 10 women. Mm -hmm. But when we, we are receiving heavy weaponry from the United States and other international culprits, then we can kill without impunity mm -hmm. and we will not see any accountability. So we need to look at what is happening, the root causes, and address them accordingly. Thank you. Any questions from the audience before we close out? Is there a, a roaming mic around? No questions, comments, concerns. Question here, young man here. Can we hear you? Okay. We probably can hear you if you have a fairly strong voice. It's working. Try and see. Hello. Hi, uh, my name is Clayton with the University of Miami School of Law Human Rights Clinic. Uh, mm. Quick question about just following up on arms violence. 
and arms trafficking into Haiti. Um, has there been any uh, concerted or group efforts with advocates in Mexico? Because I know they have similar problems with gun trafficking, um, as 70% of the arms in Mexico come from the United States. So I think that's a point of future advocacy, or I was wondering if you could elaborate on if there's any um, international sort of civil society collaboration on that issue. I don't know. Gerling, have you heard of any collaboration yeah. from the... I, I have not, but I don't know if anyone else has heard anything about stopping the trafficking of guns and, and certainly Miami port, you know, not for nothing, but <laughs> could we just control that a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? The, the solutions are not, you know, the solutions, there are many solutions, right, that are very complex. This is not a simple issue at all, but the, the idea that we can't stop the trafficking of, of guns into small islands. Um, of guns that come from the United States, frankly. I think as Gerling said, we don't make guns in Haiti. You know, we make great fruits and vegetables and stuff, but we definitely do not do not um, make no, guns. So, no, so that. apparently no, but that's a great point. Thank you. Anybody else with a question? Um, Pascal was just saying as a reminder that we have an embargo on arms, that's right, to, to Haiti as well. But somehow they, they've gotten there. Question, somebody else? Yes, It's not please. a question, it's a comment. And yes, I will please. speak if I get stuck with my Spanglish because I'm Mexican, okay? All right, I'm gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> my high school Spanish helped well, me okay. out a lot I today. I am a so. regular civil, regular person. I yep. can make an, um, where is the name? A compromise on behalf of my state or anything like that because I'm just a regular civil person. Sure. But. What I can guarantee you, and I expressed some of your friends yesterday, I live in Mexicali, Baja California, is the capital of Baja California. And over there, ITN people live super happy. They have their own ITN towns. They practice their professions. They have their own businesses. And I just want to tell the world, you're welcome to Mexicali. <laughs> they are, no, I, I'm I serious. Sure. They have like huge area. They, they already have neighborhoods and they're, we welcome, we, are, we have a huge Chinatown, we have 100 years with China people over there, like maybe 35, 45% of your population is from China, where I don't know mm -hmm. how, much, how much right now we are in the percentage, maybe we are 50 right now, mm -hmm. 20 for ITM people over there, so tell your people, your families, Mexicali. <laughs> well, because you, <laughs> no, I've seen the president happening. of Mexico again, because <laughs> we're different from Tijuana. <laughs> we're super different from Tijuana. The people, the, the land, everything. Thank They're you. happy. Thank you for that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think certainly that Mexico has really um, suffered the brunt in many ways, right, of, mm -hmm. of some of the challenges um, at the border and have been yeah. really good to many a people. Right, not only just just Haitians, certainly Venezuelans and Cubans. Guatemalans and Cubans and, and so forth. Right, um, but I think outside of that, and we're we're grateful to Mexico. The reality is that we don't want anyone at anyone's borders really trying to, as Gerlin said, chercher la vie. It's you know trying to look for life because they're literally fleeing from their homeland, which they would prefer to stay in mostly um, and not have to be in, in Mexico, although Mexico is very welcoming and, and, yeah. and thank you for yeah. that. Yep. Please. In Mexico, we have uh, like a process is named, I, t I told them to all the violations that you have over there with the police at the medical centers, everywhere we have a figure, a legal figure that is named Amparo. What you need with yeah. some right, I, I told him someone yesterday, but I don't know if they understand me because I speak so fast, so okay. Amparo, wrote it, wrote it, Amparo, we have, on the Constitution, we have, it is on the Constitution, and from there it comes the other line, it's amparo, ley de amparo. You need one of those. Every time that you got a violation of human rights, okay. you need an amparo. That's yeah. what you need. It, it have to, they make a suspensive against the authority violation and everything, and you can get protected immediately. It's just, they give you before 24 hours, you go in front of the judge. Actually, in Mexico, no one has, not even the president has more power than a judicial sentence of a federal a federal judge uh, from from the from the federal court. Like, it's not like the regular system. It's like a superior system. Thank you. System. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, I gracias, think Gerlin, yeah. who's the yeah, gracias, hermana. Um, I want to highlight that there is no safe place for black people in Mexico. Yes, we you know with what you just mentioned, 
However, I work at the US-Mexico border, and that is not the reality. That does not really provide the protection for black and asylum seekers and migrants within Mexico itself, and we have many cases that we can share. The system is there, but unfortunately, for people in migration, people in mobility, mm -hmm. that they don't have the luxury, right? But, but we do indeed um, acknowledge and appreciate all the efforts that the Mexican people and the Mexican government do to offer some safe passages for Haitian and other migrants, specifically people of African descent. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for, for sharing that. So we want to we want to try to close out on a positive note because this is very heavy. It's hard. Um, and again, I really appreciate um, Yvonne and Wozi traveling to be here with us, sharing um, in in brotherhood and, and in sisterhood and their thoughts and ideas. I certainly just being with them in the past 24 hours have have learned a lot. Um, and so to try to close on a more positive um, note, I'd love to hear from my friends here. Um, what is their hope for Haiti, right? There's a reason why you're fighting like this. There's a reason <laughs> why you left home, crossed the borders, whatever that may be. So what is it? What is your hope for Haiti? Wozi and then Pastor. I'm going to say to me that the hope for Haiti is that we are in a country where everyone is respected. respecté côté que je pas besoin de peur pour me voir petit moi l'école. Je connais que j'ai accès à santé, à éducation. Um, first of all, um, my hope for Haiti is that um, I hope one day um, all the basic uh, human rights will be respected. Um, I wouldn't have to be, uh, I don't need to have to, to fear to send my kids to school because um, I know um, it will receive a quality education. Thank you. Et okay, thank you. On l'autre espoir oui. encore que me gagne, okay. c'est que Haïti, jusqu'à ce que nous arrivions dans la situation que nous sommes décrits là, toujours été dans l'espace de discussion. Yo. Que nous comprenons aujourd'hui, hein, Haïti, c'est un pays qui a besoin aide qui besoin aide bons en milieu qui besoin surtout que société civile l'autre pays aide le joint chimel um also uh, i hope that haiti uh, it stays and and all, uh, it's always uh, been a, su a, a subject of of discussion because um until now uh, we know that I mean Haiti is and is is a need of uh, of, of 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 support of of his real friend, um, and it's important for all the um, civil society of all the all, all the country that are care uh, uh, about Haiti help the the Haitian um, civil so, 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 so society as well. Thank you. My hope for Haiti as a nation citizen is that my country can be a country where we can simply live as human beings, simply. Where we can live, simply. And as a woman and as an activist, as a feminist activist, I want that my country continue to be a country, because it, it was before, it was before, a country where women can, can have their rights, has um, their economic rights, their political rights, their social rights, and not knowing as a country where women and girls are raped every day, where we are less citizen than um, men in the country, I have the hope that I can have children in this country. I can raise my children in this country. I can plan to go, to come back, to go back in my country, live in my country, having, um, not having every morning this sensation of um, dying when I think about 
my family in this country. Every time I talk about this country, every time I take action for my country, I have to think what can be the consequences for my mom, for my sister, for my brother who are in Haiti, the consequences, the impact of my action for my family, for my friends in this country because um, of my activism, because of my voice, because what I ask as a as a Haitian for my country. I just want to live in my country as a, as a Haitian citizen, as a Haitian woman. Um, and I want, sorry. And not having this situation where every morning we have to be on social media asking where we can go today which world we can go today, which school is open today, and which gang <laughs> can operate today. Mm -hmm. So this is my hope for my country, and we will continue to fight. Um, even we are not in the countries, um, I have my colleagues as Wozi, my colleagues of Nofab Domi, my colleagues of Neges Mawa continue to fight every day in this country. So we'll continue to fight and give an everything we had for changing situ this situation for AD. Thank you. Thank you, Pascal. Uh, you want me to add something? Please. Ah. <laughs> I would like uh, to say that uh, as of today, I've been fighting uh, for my country for more than 30 years as uh, a human rights lawyer, as a human rights activist, as a professor. Uh, a non-profit organization, I don't know. I've been involved in so many things. I used to be a mayor in my native, uh, in my hometown. So you see, I've been involved in politics, education, culture, and social, uh, social culture, I think. So my hope for my country is that uh, my dream becomes to. So I would like to point out first that we bring uh, freedom to the world. We bring, uh, I mean, we both thought to the to the world that human solidarity. So, so we have been in the past. We used to to help uh, uh, Cuba, uh, Colombian, uh, Venezuelan. I mean the Latin American country. We we help them become independent. So we help uh, people in I mean in the region, even in the new, in the United States. We help uh, um, them those people enjoy their human rights. Now we as Asian are deprived of these human rights. So my hope is that my fellow citizen can breathe safely, can live with a dignity as human being, and so they enjoy the, their rights. So my hope is that my country, women are beautiful, so I can invite all of you and tell you, hey, come, come and to uh, to admire my beautiful country. Thank you. Jeremy? Um, where do I start? I, I want to highlight that last year I went to, um, to visit uh, Toussaint Louverture, and we all know who he is, and I went to Fort du Jou, and really in, in, in a spiritual moment to connect with what they fought for. I'm a big crybaby, so you see, <laughs> in case you need it now. And understanding that currently, um, Haiti is under a siege of intellectual imprisonment, mental slavery, mm. imposed by 200 plus years of boots on the neck. To, for him to fight to break the, ch the physical chains of slavery, and then for the international community to put a mental chain of slavery mm. is the conversation he and I had in that moment. And I do pray and hope that the next generation mm -hmm. do not have to deal with the same thing that my father and we are dealing with right now that Haiti, the one that we know and beautiful, can once again rise so people can see the beauty, the culture, the food, 
and the dream that I have to go back home and smile again. Thank you. It's okay to cry. Yeah. It just shows the passion that you have. And so as we close out on this International Women's Day, the theme is Embrace Equity. And I want to thank the planners um, today that made sure that we had equity here of the civil society represented, those who best know um, the communities in Haiti, those who come from Haiti, those who um, understand and um, continue to engage. Okay, Pascal, don't make me cry. <laughs> uh, so for me here, ba based in, in the U.S. And, and born in the U.S. and as a U.S. citizen, and, and this idea of embracing equity and just equity is something that I talk about all the time everywhere. Um, I guess my hope for Haiti is that the immediate hope, frankly, is that the, US, that the United States um, would not support the current regime in Haiti, quite frankly, and that the United States takes the opportunity to listen to the civil society but not just us here, thousands who have said no to the current regime in Haiti and to not do what they want to do. It's time to do something a little bit different because clearly none of that has worked, not even in the past, right? And I, I just wanna close out and say, and this is from a colleague, one of our advisors to the Haitian Women's Collective who always says, transformation is possible and freedom is free. We fight for it, but really is, it really is free if we wanna have it. So thank you so much. We appreciate your presence here and to those that are online watching. We hope you have a wonderful um, Women's Day and you celebrate the women around you in your community, your homes, your neighbors, whoever that may be. And thank you. Thank you for supporting Haiti with your presence. Thank you so much.